Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video today. So this video is going to be a watch me work for a really nice glittery uh, grey set of nails. This is my first client back since lockdown so I was really excited to do these nails today and I really hope you like them. As you can see I've already done my prep work and applied my tips. My prep video will be linked down below if you want to see that. If you do want to see another version then I can film that for you as well. I'm using really long stiletto tips today. I just got these off eBay. They're so easy for creating a coffin or anything like that because they're so tapered in at the sides. It really means that you don't have to do a lot of work. I really believe in working smarter and not harder. So this really does save a lot of time for me when I'm filing. So as you can see, I'm just making sure that they're all the same length, going in and checking each finger. I work from the left hand to the right hand. Um, because I am right-handed and then I'm just going to go in and do the shape so because I have used these tips I don't have to do a lot for the shaping it's literally just getting a hundred grit file and filing in the sides and making sure the free edge is nice and straight and the side walls or the growth channels are really nice and tapered in to make a tapered square look so I'm just going to do that and then go on to acrylic application so for this, I'm using Young Nails. I use Young Nails for all my acrylic sets. I really love the products. The technique that I learned is also from Young Nails, which I can leave that video in the description as well. It's a really, really good technique for someone who's just starting out. I've used many techniques. This isn't the technique I was taught when I started, but it's the one that works for me the best now. So as you can see, I had to re-glue down a tip, which it happens all the time. So don't worry about it. Um, I'm just tapering in the sides, making sure they're all nice and straight, holding that file at a 90 degree angle on the side walls or the growth channels, whatever you want to call them. And then again at the free edge, making sure it's at a 90 degree angle so that it's all nice and really sharp straight lines. I really love the sharp straight line look on acrylics. I think it's so sleek and so effortless. My client did then decide that she wanted them shorter. So before I go moved on to anything else, I did make them all shorter um i just did that with a straight edge nail clipper it's so easy and then i moved on to the filing routine a lot of you have probably if you've watched my other video seen my filing routine but i have kept it in uh, so if you don't want to watch this then you can skip to another part but yeah it's so easy to do just tapering in those side walls and then making the free edge nice and straight and then as i'm doing that i'm constantly turning the hand round so that it faces me so that i can see the client's view just to make sure that's nice and straight and that it's nice and even and then blending in the tips as we go so i'll do one hand turn it over make sure it's really nice and straight and that there's nothing else i need to do to it and that the client's happy and then i'll move on to the next hand
So as you can see, I've finished all the filing and the shaping and I'm now just dusting the nails off. I'm just going in with a manicure brush or a dust brush and using Young Nail Swipe, just putting that on the brush and then making sure all the dust is off the nails. I also just quickly want to say I'm really sorry that the right hand is sort of out of shot. The phone holder that I'm using to film my videos isn't actually high enough and I need to get a new one. So I'm currently looking at getting one of those, but it's out of stock. So that will be coming shortly. So I'm now just going in with my acrylic and sorting out my protein bond and getting all my paper towel ready and everything like that. So for protein bond, I just go in with two coats of that on each hand and each nail. So I'll do one coat, then it will dry a little bit as I do all 10 fingers and then go in and do another. I don't use any dehydrator anymore. I feel like the swipe is enough to dehydrate the nails and my nails have no lifting with or without it so it's perfectly fine i just use dehydrator for my gels now um so as you can see just going in with two really thin coats one dip in the bottle should be enough to do about all five fingers it just depends on how much you wipe off as you dip it in so i've just gone and done that and then i'm getting my monomer ready and my acrylic powder i'm using clear for this set today so that if she does want to come back and have a redesign or a completely new set and do something with colored acrylic then we can just file back to a really thin layer and start again so for protein bond you only need it on the natural nail it's not going to do anything if you put it on the tips but i just find it's a waste of product because it's not going to help with adhesion at all so i'm just soaking my brush in the monomer again i'm really sorry that you can't really see it i do try and move it so you can see it a little bit better so dipping my brush in the monomer a couple of times then wiping it off and putting the first bead at the middle i was actually meant to put this at the cuticle so as you can see i'm then pushing it back working it in that back area and then really putting a little bit of pressure on the front of that bead just to push it up because once you push that back that's going to call that's going to create sorry the apex as you can see i'm just checking the angles there always turning my client's fingers to make sure that everything's perfect putting that next bead in turning my brush over and blending it back that makes it blend really seamlessly it has been about four and a half months so i was a really bit a little bit rusty doing my first nail but i definitely got there in the end and then filling in any gaps with a tiny bit more acrylic and making sure that when i pat over the surface it is all nice and neat as you can see i'm just double checking everywhere always turning the client's fingers turn the client's hands to for yourself making sure that obviously you're getting everything that you can in perfectly so just putting that back again at the cuticle working it around the cuticle and the side wall and then letting gravity do a lot of the work pulling pushing that finger right down and then really putting pressure just putting pressure on the front of that bead leaving the back bit to create the structure for the apex so it should sort of go down in like a little sloping motion that's going to create the first part of your apex and then putting my brush back in the monomer bouncing it in the powder three times putting pressure on that brush turning my brush backwards and then pushing that product up towards that ledge that we just created again that really makes it blend really seamlessly and then just patting the rest of the product down for nails this length, I use probably about two beads of acrylic. Um, maybe the thumb, I'll use three. I don't really use a lot. And it just makes sure that my nails aren't really chunky. I really used to suffer with really chunky nails when I first started because I was doing the three ball method. I'm not saying that's a bad method. It just didn't work for me. It may work for some people. And there are some amazing nail techs out there who use that method. But this for me works perfectly. Um, so I'm just going to let you watch this. It's really, really simple once you get the hang of it. And it really has changed my nail game, making sure that everything is completely tucked in and that you are only putting pressure on the front part of that acrylic bead. You really don't need to touch the back bit unless it's to smooth it out because that creates your apex. So after two beads of acrylic, you've got the perfect nail. And once you keep practicing and practicing, you'll get it down perfectly. You just have to make sure you have the right consistency so that it flows properly without it being too runny or too dry so that you really have to push it so i will be doing a video this week on liquid to powder ratio that's the thing that really helped me that's what i used to do before i really started doing any design sets or anything like that i used to sit there with a laminated sheet of paper and i used to practice picking up balls of acrylic obviously the more pressure you put when you're on the brush when you're putting it in the powder after it's been dipped in the monomer the more 
uh, the bigger the bead's gonna be. The less pressure you put on the brush, the smaller the bead's gonna be. So it is really just working with pressures and finding out what works for you. Again, I learned this technique from Greg from Young Nails. Their videos are incredible. I absolutely love them. So I will link that in my prep video down below. Uh, if you have any questions, I will also leave the link to my Instagram and to my Facebook. So you can send me a message on there. I'm more than happy to help you all. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave this in here and then I will talk to you later.
So now that I've finished all the acrylic application and it's all dry and completely hard, I'm just going in with my fine drill bit from Glitter Planet, I think it was, and my Melody Susie e-file. I really like this e-file. I've been using it for a few months now, um, practicing myself because obviously I haven't had done any clients in that time, but it's really, really helpful. I love it. It's very quiet and there's no vibrations. I'm just debulking these nails, going around the cuticle, making sure it's all sealed in. So around the cuticle, I go from right to left. This is a safety bit, so it's not gonna hurt your client, it's not gonna cut your client. Um, where you've only done two beads of acrylic, these nails aren't actually that thick at all, so it's just going from the right to the left and maybe down the nail a couple of times just to make sure that you've completely smoothed out your apex. This, it's not bulky or anything like that. This really saves time in the long run. I always used to hand file my acrylic sets and I don't know why I never used an e-file. I only ever used to use it for prep or for removal, but it's literally saved so much time. I would recommend getting e-file trained because it can be really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You can really hurt a natural nail on yourself or a client. So yeah, getting training is something that I would highly recommend. And I think you have to have training in the UK. I could be completely incorrect, but I think it is ask that you have training to be able to use them on clients so as you can see just sealing in that cuticle i'm not going back and forward on the nail i am just going from the right to the left and then picking the e-file bit up and starting again over on the right side i'm not going back and forth because that can cause friction and heat spikes once i've done that as you can see i'm just taking my 100 100 nail file this is my nsi dura files i've actually started making client packs because here in the uk from lockdown you have to either throw them all the way um, which is really costly considering these are really expensive they're about 14 pounds for a pack of 10 without vat so I have now decided to make client packs. So every client's gonna have a pack with their name on it. It comes in a nice holographic bag and it's got all the files they need, all the prep tools they need, buffers and everything is disinfected, put away and cleaned before their next appointment. So I'm just going in, taking out any harsh lines with that file, making sure again that it is just 100% smooth, really move the fingers all the time, making sure that you're looking down the barrel of the nail to see if it's nice and sleek down the sides because with that you can really tell if the nail is gonna to be too thick or too thick at the sides where it's not been pulled in enough. And then making sure that your apex is nice and smooth and that it's in the correct place so that you're not gonna cause any damage when they grow out. So once I've done that, I do then just go and do the design. For the design today, I'm using Magpie Beauty. They are the company that I use for gels. And again, I really, really love their products. I was trialing them for a long time before I decided to take the jump and completely rebrand to them. So yeah, I will also leave their things in the description box down below. So I'm using Faith Glitter today and it is just absolutely stunning. It's the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my whole entire life. 
and then I am also using Goodness Gracious Me, which is a really nice light grey colour. My client had not had her nails done for a very long time. She always used to come to me every three weeks and have them really long and we always do a really nice design. So for four months, it's been really difficult. So I think we went a little bit overboard on the glitter, but you'll see that in a minute. So I'm just gonna finish my filing routine and then we'll get onto the design. So as you can see now, I'm just showing my client what colors I have and what we were deciding what to do with her design. As you can see there, I did have um, show her Faith, which is the glitter that I used, it is beautiful. So I'm starting off with a, just a thin layer of Give Me Strength. I have wiped these nails over with Swipe Again and a manicure brush just to make sure that all the dust is off and that they're completely clean and dehydrated. Um, ready for all the gel so I'm going in with a really thin layer of give me strength and then I'm just pouring the glitter onto that making sure I have uh, a paper towel underneath so that I can just re-put it back into the bottle once I'm finished so 
I'm just doing a whole nail of this and then we are going to top the coat this afterwards. So glitter sticks better in wet gel than it does on a sticky layer. On a sticky layer it can um, sort of stick up so you might have to do two or three coats of top coat but in wet gel it really sinks into that product. So I always do my full glitter nails this way. I think it's really easy and it's really simple. So after that, I'm just letting her put that in the lamp for 60 seconds for it to fully cure. I do leave it in for a little bit longer sometimes just to make sure it is double cured. And then tapping off all the excess glitter and going in with goodness gracious me, I do two coats of this all over the nails. The first coat is really thin. So if there's streaks in the nails, it doesn't matter because the second coat is always a little bit thicker and then that makes makes it perfect coverage. So I'm gonna do that on all of the nails and then we are gonna go back in with Faith Glitter. Again, you'll see that we fade it down the nail and it's just a really simple and easy design, but it is so effective. So I'm just gonna finish talking now. I think I've talked throughout this video pretty much the whole thing. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna shut up and let you watch it. I just really wanna thank you all for watching my previous video on the stigmas in the nail industry. I can't believe we're at th over 300 views, which is just insane. So I do really wanna thank you all. I will link that video down below as well. If you haven't seen it, it's just my thoughts on the nail industry and the stigmas around nail pricing and stuff like that. So if you do like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below if you haven't already. I will be posting videos four times a week on my channel. So if you have any recommendations or things you want me to show you then please leave a comment down below don't forget to check out my instagram and my facebook if you want an appointment i am taking on new clients at the moment i'm based in essex so take a look at those they will be linked in the description box below along with all the products that i've used in today's video so again i really want to thank you all for watching i hope you're having a wonderful weekend and i will speak to you soon bye